<laughs> Sorry. Um, it's 9.30, March 7, 2023. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a City of Prescott Council Subcommittee on Water Issues meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Member Montoya? Here. Member Sishka? Here. And let the record reflect that Chairperson Roosing is excused from this meeting. Thank you, Clerk. And uh, public comment Public comment will be accepted following each agenda item and are limited to three minutes. Please complete a comment card and return it to the city clerk. Speakers will be called in the order they are received. Uh, item number four, discussion action items. Item A. Okay, approval of the February 7th, 2023 meeting minutes. Chair, I move to approve the meeting minutes. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion aye. passes. This is two zero. Item B. Item 4B, water service application 22-048, a water service application submitted by Kelly Wise Engineering on behalf of Distinctive Homes and Architecture. Location, APNs 111-11-139 through 111-11-143, comprising 1.9 acres in T14N R02W section 32 northeast one quarter. Oh, that's a mouthful. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, council members. Uh, I'm Brian Reese. I'm uh, with the Water Resources Environmental Division of uh, Public Works for the city. And today we have for you um, 30, uh, 32 uh, unit apartment uh, complex um, for your consideration. Go ahead and bring up the map here real quick. Okay, so um, uh, location of the project is uh, adjacent to Sunset Avenue. Um, we're just south of Whipple Street, um, and Fair Street is below us. Uh, Miller Creek uh, does cross through the project along the southern boundary. Um, for reference, over here, um, this is the Fry's build, uh, the Fry's uh, um, uh, store, and then this is the uh, True Value store right here. So um, I'm going to bring up the site plan so here's our site plan we have a 32 unit um, uh, apartment complex um, along the southern boundary is Miller Creek uh, there is a flood zone along that southern boundary um, and those are shown on the site plan um, designated by these two lines right here uh, the floodway line and then the flood zone line so they've um, They've known about this floodway. Obviously, they've moved to move all of the all of the residences out of the floodway and only have the uh, parking area in the structure. So they'll have to they'll have to do their engineering around that to make sure they don't um, change the water surfaces in there. But um, but having the residents out is uh, is what we really want. So um, uh, so the. Uh, um, this uh, site is just made up of five individual um, parcels uh, being combined into this one apartment complex. Um, Kelly Wise has uh, performed a, um, a water demand analysis. Um, so they utilize the worm multiplier um, value of 0.12 acre feet per apartment uh, uh, unit uh, to come up with a total demand of 3.84 acre feet uh, for the uh, complex. Um, the uh, site plan includes 0.43 acres of landscaping. So utilizing the Arizona Department of Resources, a multiplier of 1.5 uh, acre feet per, per acre, um, that yields um, 0 0.065 acre feet of water for the landscaping, uh, giving a total estimated uh, usage for this uh, project of 4.49 acre feet. Um, Existing buildings uh, for the uh, two existing, there's two existing residences on, on the parcel at, uh, at this point, um, and the existing billing records uh, show uh, 0 0.14 acre feet of usage. So the uh, net increase in water demand for this uh, project would be 4.35 acre feet. Um, Due to uh, uh, weather issues that we've had over the last three or four weeks, um, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission has not yet um, uh, reviewed this application. It will be coming up this Thursday. So, 
Thank you, Brian. Uh, I have a couple questions, but Councilman Sishka, you have any questions? Go right ahead. I have no questions. Okay. Uh, one of the questions I had was looking at the site plan, are all these units going to be essentially the same size? I know that's not totally germane to the topic of water, but I just was, want to make sure that I, that looked right on the site plan. Looks like Tammy is telling us that, yes, they are essentially the same size. Okay. And then my other question, looking at the site plan, uh, it looked like there's some trees that they're going to keep in the parking lot because they're notated. You can't, it's too small to see here, but I saw some said keep, some said like, get rid of. Is that correct? <laughs> George was nodding his head. Uh, what Tammy Dewitt, community planner. Um, that's our understanding that some of those trees are going to be used for as part of their land, parking lot landscape, landscaping. Okay. Do we know, do those, I guess the reason I'm asking, we, I'm, my assumption is they fit into the native plant palette. We encourage. I know use of Councilman existing. Moore is going to have some questions about whether or not there are sycamores or not. So, and that's something we'll look at at permitting. At this time, we didn't receive it okay. as part of this application. That's all my questions. Nothing for you, Steve. Nothing for me, Brandon. I'll entertain a motion. Okay, I move to recommend forwarding WSA 22-048 to Council for approval. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Next item. Item 4C, WSA 23-006, a water service application submitted by Stroh Architecture Incorporated, location APNs 109-01-068, 070, 072, and 075B, Old City Hall, located in T13N R02W, Section 4, Northeast One Quarter. Okay, so I think uh, everybody probably knows the location of this one. Um, map up here shows uh, it's the right old uh, city hall building. And right, um, right now, right. <laughs> we have to push the plunger on this one first. Yes. So um, I'm going to bring up the uh, site plan real quick. Okay, so the proposed usage on this is to uh, is a uh, multi-use uh, um, uh, building, um, uh, incorporating um, uh, 50 units of apartments, um, 97 um, hotel room units, about 16,700 um, square feet of uh, restaurants and retail space, and um, associated patio and lobby areas. So. The city um, of Prescott um, uh, prepared a demand analysis for this site. I'm going to go ahead and bring up this, uh, this table as we're talking here. So um, the city of Prescott, like I said, uh, prepared the demand analysis to, to try to determine the uh, the water usage for this uh, for this project. Uh, Fifty uh, uh, the 50 units of uh, multifamily dwelling. Uh, we utilize the worm multiplier of 0.12 um, to obtain the six acre feet um, estimated usage. Um, there is a pool on site, um, so the um, uh, pool was. Um, uh, utilize the uh, Arizona Department of Water Resource Demand Calculator uh, to get the 0 0.28 acre feet per year. Uh, non residential demand estimates, uh, hotel rooms. Um, the uh, uh, city staff utilized uh, three hotels um, within the, uh, the downtown area to try to create an estimate for this. Uh, two hotels uh, contained a pool, um, one hotel did not um, have a pool with it. Um, so, um, utilizing the uh, three-year records for those uh, three hotel facilities um, and then doing an average um, uh, throughout those three uh, facilities um, came up with the, um, with the associated multiplier there or the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the gallons per room, 29,990 gallons per room, uh, and used that to estimate the 8.64 acre feet for, uh, per year for the hotel usage. Um, retail and restaurant, um, there were several, I think, um, a total of uh, five um, existing restaurants and bars and five uh, retail outlet units all around the, uh, the downtown area and uh, grabbing their water usages and then uh, creating a composite uh, demand from that. 
uh, for the retail area uh, uh, came up with the 2.37 acre feet per year for, uh, for that usage. Uh, the bank, uh, we utilized um, two different uh, uh, bank properties um, um, in order to come up with the uh, bank usage, uh, relatively small usage of 0 0.07 acre feet per year. And then um, the landscape, uh, the, uh, the project uh, as shown on the, on the site plan is, has very limited uh, landscaping at this point, but utilizing the um, um, Arizona, Arizona Department of Resources 1.5 acre foot multiplier uh, came up with 0 0.6 acre feet per year. Um, uh, and um, taking in the credit of uh, the previous usage of the building, 0 0.22, came up with a total um, net demand of uh, 10.92 acre feet for this project. Brian, uh, can I just ask a, a question? Looking at this, my assumption is that we're looking at one application with two different uh, components of demand, one's residential and one's non-residential. So those will pull distinctly from both budgets for the water policy? Yes, I believe so. I see a lot of nodding of staff in the background. Okay, great. Um, Very supportive. Thank you. Uh, okay, and so accordingly, uh, there's no appeal process necessary for this? There is no appeal process necessary for this. We, uh, we evaluated um, policy 14. Um, and the 10.92 uh, acre feet is just under 50% of the remaining annual budget, so no appeal process is necessary. Okay, excellent. Uh, my next question, on the site plan, there's a notation here that says 114,000 gallon underground wa rainwater storage vaults for toilets and landscape irrigation. Uh, I know the applicant is here, but do you know any more details about that? I do not. I don't Does have anyone? any information about that. Maybe the applicant can. I don't, th I don't think the applicant's here today. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. yeah. All right. Well, <coughs> I guess I'll ask that question again when it comes before council. Okay, and we can look at that for you. <laughs> Steve, you have any questions? No questions. I'll entertain a motion. I move to recommend forwarding WSA 23-006 to council for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item. Item 4D, presentation and discussion regarding monthly update for PFOS. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Pro Tem. Steve Olfers, uh, City uh, of Prescott Utilities Manager. I have a very short presentation for you today because the EPA still has us out blowing in the wind on the, on the MCL for our uh, PFAS um, rule that we're waiting for. I've heard all kinds of rumors, but uh, <laughs> still nothing has come true. But uh, what I did provide for you is just kind of a quick uh, narrative update of how we're, how we're doing with, with PFAS. Uh, the, uh, the semi chart that looks like it put, printed out um, gives us the latest results of our PFOS testing from each one of our wells. Uh, we, nothing really abnormal. Uh, if you look at the current uh, results compared to the averages, so we're doing, uh, we're doing very well. If Let me slide down just a little bit just to show. Our EPDS 11 is starting to creep up a little bit, just above the tech limit. That is our Chino wells, so our blending uh, plan. We are struggling a little bit with that. We've spent some time putting some new infrastructure back online and just getting ready for the summer. And so sometimes it's hard to run certain wells in certain, in certain configurations. So we're still struggling to keep that down below non-detect, but it's as low as we can, we can get it at this point. Um, other than that, we are waiting on our MCL. Uh, I've been talking to our partners in, in Prescott Valley and, and Chino Valley, you know, kind of trying to figure out how we're going to go about this type of thing when it comes out and everybody's just waiting for the final, the final say on the MCL. So once no, that happens, we'll have it before you. No real indication as to when that's going to happen at this point. I heard a rumor it was supposed to happen last Friday. <laughs> and I uh, also heard a rumor of what the level was supposed to be too, but I'm not going to spread that one because I don't like it. 
Uh, Stephen, my question for you is, what are the concerns that we have that if we don't have an MCL by the time our water consumption uh, creeps up, how are we going to manage uh, having to put, uh, what I would imagine would be to put some some of these, the Chino 3 well that are, is it Chino 3 that we have out of service? And Chino 3 is out of service. It'll, it might be back sometime during the summer. Okay. So that'll give us a little bit of flexibility in that well field. Um, really, we only run two, three, four, and five uh, with three out of service right now. So that will give us a little bit more flexibility. That, that well was much more consistent on helping us mix with well three, or I'm sorry, well four. And so right now we're using well two to mix with well four. Uh, so it's a little bit higher um, and with the outcome, but it seems that many of the, uh, this, this test is so sensitive that a part per trillion doesn't take much. Sure. And so there's a, there seems to be quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, bouncing around that, that, set, that mean. But, uh, um, but at this point, yes, Well3 will be very helpful to us when it comes back online. Is there any additional preparation or uh, consideration that you guys are doing to kind of prepare for the summer that we should know about? Really, it's just trying to figure out which wells are going to work well or work the best, to, I know, <laughs> to give us, to, <laughs> sorry, to give us the best benefit, which would be to try to be uh, lower than what we are currently. So we're just, you know, the, the biggest challenge is that we do what we think we should do mathematically, and then we put it on the, in the nature, and then we see what comes out, and then we have to try again once we get the results. And so. Having a having a two month delay makes it a little bit challenging to be flexible on uh, on the uh, on our blending plan, but we're get, starting to get a hang hang of it. I think we're really starting to get a feel for how the wells react. We have another tank coming online. The Chino tank, West Tank, has been offline for for quite a while, so that is back in service. That'll give us a little bit more volume to mix in. Uh, the problem is is that the ingredients we're putting in have the contaminants in there and we're just trying to do the best we can to 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 dilute them out fair enough councilman sishka no nope. i'm good perfect right. <coughs> well if there are no other questions i appreciate it thank you thank you for the report steve, job, steve. thanks Thanks. thank you next item item 4e discussion regarding regarding proposed water legislation impacting the city of prescott and surrounding areas Uh, hello again, Council. Brian Reese here again. So I'm um, going to put this down just a little bit. Okay. So um, let me grab this. this up. So I just have a very short uh, presentation today for you on water bills that are going through this state legislation just to um, bring you up to speed on a few of them. Um, uh, so the Northern Arizona Municipal uh, Water Users Association, NAMWA, um, has been um, has been tracking the state regulation for water um, over the course of the last month, maybe month and a half. Um, had several meetings to this point uh, with all the members to discuss their positions on uh, these uh, legislation. Um, so to this point, uh, we've seen about approximately 80 water bills that the uh, that the association has uh, has been looking through. Um, to this point, they've supported uh, 18 of those bills and opposed four of the bills. So I won't talk about all those. I just picked uh, a few of them that seem to be moving um, either through the the legislature or maybe have more uh, impact. On, uh, on our local area, so. Okay, so um, very timely, uh, House Bill uh, 2765, uh, Water Resources and Treatment, um, uh, uh, sponsored by Representative Sandoval, is a bill um, to appropriate $5 million from the general fund for fiscal year 2023 and 24 um, to ADEQ for the treatment and uh, research identify treatment of PFOS. So um, this is a bill that NAMWA is supporting at this point in time. Um, at this point, uh, it's been read through the first and second reading in the House, um, but there has been no action taken by any of the uh, committees at this point. So we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on that bill and see where it goes. Uh, 
Um, second bill here, um, S Senate Bill uh, 1432, Assured Water, uh, Small Residential Development, uh, sponsored by Senator Wazak. Um, NAMWA is supporting this bill also. This bill is identical to House Bill 2048. And as of yesterday, um, uh, this bill was still identical to House Bill um, um, 2048. Um, there hasn't been any uh, diversion of the two bills at this point. Um, so this bill is basically, um, uh, uh, will require anybody who's seeking a um, uh, building permit for more than six residential units uh, within an active management area uh, to attain a certificate of assured water supply for that uh, development. Um, yeah, it does not, uh, uh, does not apply to an applicant who has uh, obtained a water commitment from um, a water service um, that uh, has an assured water supply. So um, uh, as the bill in the name it says, uh, assured water um, uh, is looking at making sure that all developments in an AMA um, uh, have assured water supply um, and are playing by the same rules. Um, as of, like I said, as of yesterday, the bill is still identical to 2048. Um, updates on the bill, so um, put this together a, a, about a week, week and a half ago in order to get it ready for this meeting, and uh, legislation is ongoing, all, or uh, legislation's moving all the time. So uh, updates since this, um, as you can see, this was moving fa fairly quickly through, um, passed through their uh, committees, uh, the Democratic and Republican um, caucuses, um, a committee as a whole, and was transmitted to the House. Uh, since I put this together, um, it has gone through the first and second reading of the House, but no action has been taken by any of the committees um, uh, through the House at this point. So, um, so we'll go ahead and keep on uh, looking uh, how this bill is, is, is moving through. Our next bill is uh, it's supposed to be House 2793, uh, Water Efficient Plumbing Fixtures. Um, another uh, NAM law uh, position on this is to support. Um, so this bill um, defines uh, um, or beginning on January 1st of, of 2025, uh, the bill would require that all plumbing fixtures in the state uh, would uh, meet or exceed the EPA's water sense program standards. Um, the water sense uh, uh, labeled products um, all have been uh, certified to use at least 20% less water, uh, save energy, and perform as least uh, as well as uh, as the normal fixtures. Um, the bill also includes. Um, uh, that uh, provision that all the s all state buildings uh, make an effort to install uh, waterless uh, urinals by August 25th of 2024. So, um, so Bill representing uh, the state's commitment to uh, water conservation. Um, at this point, uh, Bill has not been uh, has uh, not received any action on any of the uh, committees at this point, and uh, as of yesterday, it's in the same position as when I put this together. So we'll keep tracking that. Uh, Senate Bill um, one one six zero water effluent credit. Um, so. Uh, this is a is rather lengthy bill, but um, uh, NAMWA at this point is has remained neutral on this bill. Where, where uh, the organization is tracking it, as it's uh, as it's moving through. Um, uh, at this point, AMWA, um, uh, the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association, is opposing this bill. Um, it seems like this bill was is stemming from um, a specific problem down in the valley with some of the big uh, beverage manufacturers. Um, inability to uh, using a lot of water and having uh, issues with some of the local utility companies and able to discharge their water effectively or in, in a price range that is going to work for them. So um, this bill. Um, would allow industrial users to go ahead and treat and store their own water underground in tanks on their facility 
and be able to uh, obtain long-term uh, long storage credits for that water uh, for their usage. Um, so uh, it fixes an issue with some of these, some of these uh, big water users, industrial water users uh, in that realm. Um, uh, those who support it say that this is a needed fix because this industry needs the incentives to stay in the state, and uh, and 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 we need to fix this problem. The way that the uh, the water uh, laws are set up right now um, is problematic for them. Um, opposition uh, states that you know you're allowing um, an industrial user to treat water and obtain these long-term storage credits, but they do not have. Uh, they're not a assur assured water supplier, so they don't have to uh, conform to any of those regulations. Um, and basically, they are being allowed to pump the aquifer, but uh, not having to contribute back to it. So, um, like I said, right now, NAMWA is uh, monitoring the bill closely and is neutral at this point, but um, uh, is keeping the track and see where this goes. Um, at this point, uh, uh, updated is the same as shown on the uh, on the screen right now. Um, it has moved through the uh, Democratic and that and the Republican uh, caucuses at this point, so uh, it's moving through. Our next bill, uh, House Bill 2731, local groundwater stewardship uh, areas. Um, NAMWA is, uh, has a neutral position on this bill right now. Uh, Representative um, uh, Bayasuchi um, is a sponsor on the bill. Um, the bill is identical to um, uh, Senate Bill 1306. My notes over here a little bit. Uh, so basically, um, what this bill would do is um, it would take $50 million of uh, state lottery funds every year um, and transfer it to, uh, our, um, to uh, ADWR's Groundwater Stewardship Fund um, for the purposes of, um, of uh, creating these local groundwater stewardship areas. Um, it's a long bill. It has a lot of... A lot of um, a lot of rules and a lot of regulations within the 41 pages of the bill. Um, but in essence, uh, the bill would allow um, county supervisors to create a council for these uh, long, um, these local um, groundwater stewardship areas um, of, uh, of people from that community um, in order to, um, and their responsibility would be to, to uh, create a management plan for the groundwater areas and um, provide best management practices um, uh, for um, uh, um, conservation of groundwater. So um, the, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, this bill is fairly, fairly controversial throughout the, um, um, uh, in that uh, members of NAMWA, there's, uh, there's those who support it and there's those who are opposed to it. Um, on the side that support the bill, um, they're saying that uh, worked long and hard. This bill has come up previously, and I've worked long and hard to try to create a um, a bill that will support these rural communities and their water needs, and and try to get them some you know some ability to 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 handle the, you know their to manage their water. Um, those in opposition. Uh, say that as the bill is structured at this point, um, you know, um, giving that type of uh, that type of power to a to a local council that might be that may not have the expertise or the experience um, to run a sophisticated water program um, is not the the best way to proceed, and it, it needs work. So, um, so at this point. Um, uh, a lot of opposition and a lot of uh, support. Uh, we'll have to see where that one's going to go. Um, so, and uh, next bill, um, House Bill 2561, City Water Provider uh, Requirement Service. Um, 
NAMWA is uh, opposing this bill at this point. Um, Representative uh, Colladine is a sponsor, and this bill is identical to State Bill 1093. At this point, um, actually, the, the bills have, um, have diversed quite a bit. Um, this, uh, the state bill is, is fairly close to what you're seeing here up on the screen, but the, uh, the House Bill 2561 uh, has been edited quite, quite substantially as it's made its way through all the, uh, through all the voting. Um, as far as I can see, this bill is, is basically is, is proposed for the specific issue between Scottsdale and, and Rio Verde foothills that has happened with, the, um, with, with that water issue. Um, so this bill was, was generated in order to try to try to create a, a remedy for that um, um, and require you know the city to, to provide water uh, as can be seen with these constraints up here so um, but uh, uh, whether this is the most effective way to 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 keep a situation like this from handling again is is, is definitely debatable. And um, at this point, NAMWA is, uh, is, is opposed to the bill. So um, at this point, though, the bill is moving uh, rapidly through. Um, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. That was, uh, that was uh, the other bill. But um, um, let me see. Now, th at this point, uh, it's basically we're in the same, uh, same position as shown here. So it's. Uh, uh, worked its way through the uh, Natural Resources and Energy Water Commission, um, but um, that's about where we're at at this point. So, and lastly, uh, we have Senate Bill 1392, uh, Appropriation Arizona State Park uh, for the Upper Verde River. Um, NAMWA is in support. Um, there's not a, a whole lot of information on this bill at this point, but it uh, appropriates an uh, undetermined amount of, uh, from the general fund uh, to create a state park um, at the headwaters of the Verde River. Um, so our friends over in Chino Valley um, uh, asked NAMWA to support the bill, and uh, there was none of the members had uh, any uh, objections to that. So. Uh, we're supporting the bill at this point. Uh, it's moving its way through um, the Senate at this point, um, and we'll see where it goes. So um, that's basically the reporting I have for you. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. Any questions, Councilman Sushko? Uh, <coughs> just thought of something. What are, what are the ramifications of a state park being formed at the headwaters of the Verde? Um, I'm not sure. I understand exactly what the ramifications would be for it. Um, I don't think there would be any, uh, I, well, honestly, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if what the ramifications would be, if there would be any, uh, any issues to the Big Chino Water Ranch. Leslie, do you have any opinion on that? Sure, good morning, uh, subcommittee. Good morning. So this has been, predominantly led by the town of Chino Valley. And I don't think there's ramifications next necessarily. There might be implications okay. that might need to be addressed. So if it's looking to be um, more active, say, in a park nature, you know, a non-native park nature, then you might be looking at, um, uh, like, uh, I'm trying to think what golf courses use. I'm stumbling right now because I'm thinking <laughs> fertilizers. You don't need that to happen there. So if they keep it natural, it might work. They are also talking about making it um, a location for a regional uh, wastewater um, recharge facility. So then you do maybe have some implications between native waters and mm -hmm. wastewaters. Um, so we're just watching this the best we can. So um, at this point, I would use probably there might be some implications, but overall, the town uh, would really like to have that piece of property. Um, the Nature Conservancy is involved, and there's another third party that's also involved. So we'll just keep watching it. Um, there could be benefits. So when I think of the headwaters of the Verde, I think of Sullivan Dam. Right. Um, I think of normally, and not today, but normally the trickle that is, is right there. Um, how, how far do the headwaters extend? So this park is looking more south of there, where Del Rio Springs is. So that's a good 
three to five maybe miles. So it's going to okay. be south of that. And how far it actually extends, uh, if it goes right up to where Sullivan Dam is, I'm not exactly sure. But they're looking, you remember the old Del Rio Ranch and sure. the ponds that used to be out there, looking at that piece of property right there. And the city also has a piece of land nearby as well as Prescott Valley. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Uh, next item. Item 4F, discussion regarding an update from staff on the residential, non-residential water budget and projects under contract for the period from February 1, 2023 through March 1, 2023. Okay, so we have our, um, our water budgets update for you um, uh, from uh, a period starting um, February 1st through March 1st. Um, so uh, per, per policy 11 through 13, um, uh, uh, established semi-annual water budget for the residential and non-residential projects from January 1st through June 30th. Um, with the allocations uh, uh, for the budget being 25 acre feet per year for uh, residential and 25, 25 acre feet per year for non-residential. Um, so for the period of um, February 1st through March 1st, there were no residential projects approved during this period. So I'm going to bring Up here, so um, so at this point, um, all we have is the uh, the projects approved in January, the point one seven, uh, subtracting from the twenty five acre uh, foot budget, leaves a remaining twenty four point eight three acre feet in the uh, residential uh, project budget. So for uh, this same period, um, for non-residential projects, there were three uh, non-residential uh, projects uh, approved uh, administratively as they were uh, below one acre foot. Um, um, they were um, determined at 0 0.27 um, acre feet, um, 0 0.62 acre feet, and 0 0.32 acre feet. Um, and combined with the, um, with the projects uh, um, approved in January. Uh, we have a total of 1.27 acre feet out of the 25 acre foot budget, leaving a remainder of 23.73 acre feet in the non-residential budget at this point. And then as uh, for policy, uh, water policy um, nine uh, states that um, if a property holds a water contract or an existing agreement uh, um, for water, that, um, that these applications would be um, approved administratively and, um, and, and tracked um, through, this, uh, uh, through this subcommittee. Um, so for this period, we had three additional projects um, come in that have uh, water under contract or under agreement. Um, all three of them are residential, uh, single-family residential homes, um, totaling uh, 0 0.59 uh, acre feet. Um, and added to those uh, previously approved, uh, gives us a total of uh, 469 um, units approved to this point, um, totaling 65.87 acre feet uh, since January 1st. So. That is all I have for you on, on uh, the water budget update. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Brian, I have a question. Uh, I'm just doing some quick, quick math here on what we approved today, and assuming it gets approved by council, it's an additional 10.63 acre feet out of the residential budget, which would leave approximately 4.42 acre feet for the remaining of the residential budget to get us through June. Uh, yes. Do we have? A sense from maybe community development or anyone else that is that an adequate supply at this point, or do we have additional applications that we're going to have to kick into the following period? Tammy's thinking. If you don't have an answer, it's okay too. She doesn't have an answer. Okay, <laughs> just something. Just I, I'm always curious about what the the implications are because you know I know that 
when we have budgets like this and constraints, we can create a queue. So I just want to know so if we have a sense that there is a queue that's creating, it seems like we don't have that sense right now. Um, and then looking at the commercial, looks like we have 15.09 left. The other question I have is, is there a further, and I'm sorry, Leslie, but <laughs> is there further um, thoughts on what the mayor's water policy advisory ad hoc committee, I think that's the title of it, um, has kind of kicked around as thought process for advising council on the water budget, or are they still kind of at they, where they were the last time I asked? Yes, to your question, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. So at the end of the week, the um, group will have their recommendations as succinctly as possible. Sure. And they will be reviewing those prior to our next meeting on March, I think it's the 21st is when we meet again. So um, they are on their way uh, related to policies one through 22, as well as uh, items in text that seem to be challenging, challenging as well as um, kind of a catch-all other items. Sure. So they brought up some other items they were felt very strongly about last time, and so um, which have come up before, but we're gonna uh, go ahead and catalog those into one document. Okay, and so, so we should we'll see that for council? So they will, um, your next update from that group will be April. Okay. So we're trying to timetable that so that if there are choices that uh, the council would like to make to modify por portions of the policy, you'll have time to do that before the next time frame kicks in, the July through December uh, 2023 budgeting time period. Got it. So it's in the works. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Leslie. Councilman Sushka? Yeah, I just have a just a thought. You know, one of the things about the water budget is that it may not be realistic at certain times. And I think that this is one of those times. There's a housing shortage. And if we say, okay, we're at the beginning of March and there's very, there's four point something left in the, in the residential, that means that we have to wait until July 1st to do anything other than four point some odd 14. acre, is it 14? 14, yeah. That's what my math is. 14 is what I got, I think. Yeah, 14 on the 14, if you, there's 24.83 remaining, uh -huh. and then we approved today about 10 something? Or, yeah, yeah almost 11, right? Almost 11. Yeah, that was the Stro project. And or, then, but yeah, taking out the... Um, but the apartments as well on Sunset. I think, anyways, my, my math that I did, again, just... Okay, just then quick I misunderstood. 14.42. So, I mean, it's, you know, yeah. and that's why, to your point, I was kind of like, well, how, how close are we to pushing against that? And it doesn't sound like Tammy's saying not that close. So okay. it's certainly funny. something to keep an eye on, though. I, I, I completely agree with you, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's fine. And... Uh, it's nice to know that r rather than four, there's 14. But point taken, um, yeah, as you get to these these time periods or after you have a couple of projects that come in that have, uh, have taken up a considerable amount of the budget, um, and we do get with, uh, with, with the um, community development area um, and try to foresee what's coming in through their permitting system, and we can keep you on track on if we're going to be cutting it close or if uh, how things are going. So, I just don't want somebody to walk in and say, "Oh my gosh, we're going to have to put this pro push this project off three months just to get in under the budget." Yeah, or maybe some some understanding from the. Uh, how, how that might be handled in the future, too, might be something that we yeah. look at with the, with the ad hoc committee. So we'll do our best. I mean, this is a, the long-running story of the city since I've been here, sure. is that if you have a budget, there comes a time where if there's no more water on the water tree, then you have to you know delay or make decisions. And so uh, the city will be back in that position again, where if you budget a certain amount, then you'll have to make decisions on how that water is used. And look at your 
overall, uh, I think we've had this discussion before, community development plays a big role in helping uh, all of us understand how do we have a good mixture of residential to commercial to, you know, we have job force, you know, opportunities, um, recreation opportunities, you have to look at the whole picture. So if you sure. over, you know, if you load yourself too heavily all residential, then you didn't leave enough water for the commercial industrial that you might need to serve that community that you've developed. What's been interesting to me, Leslie, is, is watching in the, in the short time that we've had this budget in place now is that it, we're, it seems like we're leaving a lot of water at the table, no pun intended, um, with regard to commercial on a recurring basis. And so I know, I guess what I, the reason I asked about the mayor's uh, ad hoc committee is one of the things that is something that I, that I contemplate through this budget process is do we roll over a portion of it? Do we not roll over a portion of it? Do we roll over all of it? Do we, you know, how are we looking at this? And this is something that I'll say again, what would be useful for me in consideration to this water budget is a more macro level view of what is our total uncommitted demand look like relative to this budget? Because it's one thing to say, yep, we did really good. We only have, you know, but what is it cumulatively doing to our uncommitted demand? That's information for me as a policymaker that it would be good to have on hand to know how effective this policy is working or how effective we're managing our uncommitted demand. And and I think, you know, there to your point, there's things we have to kind of look at. Where what are we as a community prioritizing on? We can't if we go too heavy to residential, then we don't have the commercial that we need to support our to support police and fire with right, tax or sales your tax, fire right? stations you need yeah. to build yep. or your upsizing of right. hospitals or your upsizing yeah. of you know, different things that you uh, need to support that right. base so, community. Yeah. So, so in my mind, you know, it, it, it's uh, again. That's it, I, I'm I'm glad to hear that they're making progress on that mayor's ad hoc committee because they're not easy okay. solutions or easy problems to to kind of come up with solutions for. And so, I would hope that we can get. Um, you know, there's a lot of pretty bright people on that ad hoc committee that I think, you know, with diverse perspectives that I'd I'd love to ha know what they're thinking and how they're tackling this because I. I don't have a definitive way forward myself. So. It's a big lift for them because they went from a mm -hmm. policy that some of them knew beforehand to a 2019 one that kind of disassembled a lot of the things and then right. they're now back to a policy that was kind of rewritten from a previous one. But if the underpinnings aren't there, it's yeah. very challenging uh, for them. But I would say overall the city has been looking since 1999, you know, when I went back into the records and cleaned everything up when I arrived. Um, that rollover was part of the, the planning, and that's what had been happening. So if that rollover from, you know, one time period to the next should happen, so it starts building the bank, then uh, maybe that's important to do again. Maybe it's not. So we'll do our best yeah, to try to balance all these different things that are within policies 1 through 22 uh, in light of where we are now and the tools that we have available right. to us. So. No, I appreciate it. And, and like I said, to me, it's you, you have to balance a lot of different objections as uh, objectives as a community. So, you know, it's it's useful to kind of have as much information on hand to do that. So thank you. So Councilman Mr. anything else? I'm good. Thanks. Anything else from staff? General announcements. Yes. General announcements. Yes. Let's hear it. So <clears throat> we have a save the date, uh, Friday, May 19th, there's going at, at uh, the High Country Conference Center in Flagstaff, Arizona. We're going to have a, a water utility leadership forum, and um, this is sponsored by NAMWA. And um, there are going to be, well, as of this morning, actually, 15 uh, people have signed up for the operator's track. Now, this is where they could get credit towards uh, licenses um, for, you know, operating licenses. It can, they can go from one level to the next level, to the next higher level by getting certain classes taken. So um, they can, uh, uh, there are eight sessions, they're each 45 minutes long, and <laughs> they, vary, they cover various topics like the Arizona uh, NIPTES program, um, 
uh, preparing alternative so sources for meeting primary, national primary drinking water standards. Those are just some of the topics that they'll be covering in the operator's track. Now on the, um, the water manager's track, we have 49 people signed up. And they're going to um, be doing two different tracks actually at the hotel. The, um, the 19 that, I'm sorry, the 15 that are in the operator's track, they're going to be doing it online. So there is that option to take the classes that way too. So that's what's going on on May 19th in Flagstaff. Anybody have any questions about it? Nope. Good. All right. Sounds good. Save the date. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Hello again, subcommittee, Leslie Grazer. Um, so this was an item we wanted to have some more um, materials ready for you, but uh, timing just isn't there for us at this time. So the topic is in within your policy, policy three, it speaks to estimated water usage shall be based on usage by similar project types as determined by the water resource management model unless demand analysis is requested by the city. And then it says, the warm water use estimates shall be updated in January of each calendar year, incorporating the most recent five, uh, ro most recent rolling five-year average. Updated water usage estimates shall be provided by project type and presented to the subcommittee and council annually at its March meeting um, as a discussion or information item. So we're going to provide you a little bit of information today on this. Um, this is an example, as uh, Mayor Pro Tem had brought up, the mayor's ad hoc is working on this policy. The water resource management model is also um, still fairly young, and so we're practicing updating it still and moving that more towards our GIS department versus the consultant doing that. So as they're working together, um, these numbers aren't necessarily available yet, but they haven't changed significantly. So. Um, one item within this policy, it states to um, rolling five-year average. That's not how the worm actually works, so we'll be correcting that text within the policy. It's averaging for its entire known data set. And so for single family, it's at 0.17. We don't expect that to deviate wildly because it's a very big set of data for the averaging that's happening on this one as well as the multifamily. We don't expect big swings from 0.12 to happen either. Um, one of the challenges that we're working with is that within our billing database, we don't always know how many units are associated with one multifamily billing point. So that's what the consultant and our in-house staff are working on now. They're fine-tuning that a little bit more. So the bottom line is we don't have a number we can give you today as a general announcement or as a focused topic, um, but we are looking at having that ready by March 21st for that council meeting because our policy states that you will have that um, at your March meeting. So I don't know if you have any questions, but we will be able to break it out, multifamily, single family, so your residentials, as well as your non-residential. We have numbers for that. And of course, you might remember, um, it's been a while since you've probably been told, but we uh, basically compile many different categories within the billing uh, database for non-residential. It could be um, the turf irrigation that happens, the commercial, the municipality billing points. We have some others. And the list kind of goes on from there, but we put that all in one. So I don't know if you have any questions. I don't have a whole lot of uh, information I can give you today other than I don't expect anything wild to happen between one year and the next because we average across the entire data set. Council Masushka? Yeah, I just have one comment. I mean, we've come a long way, Leslie, since the 0.35 per residential um, unit for um, acre feet. I think we have, but it's also important. We talk about this quite a bit at our commission as well for uh, the mayor's ad hoc, is that there is confusion. Is that the point three six actually was what was how the Department of Water Resources, the regulatory agency, developed the number. And that's important um, to have that. Um, that also allowed us to do support services without having to try to do these onesie twosies, you know, acre foot, an acre foot here, an acre foot there within your current policy. So um, it's important to know your actuals. Um, it's also important to have margins of safety on them. And at this time, you know, a 0.17 and a 0.12 
doesn't give this, the city much protection. So um, I only say this in that I think in the future we'll have to look at this a little more closely and see how the city wants to prepare and itself long term versus just kind of year to year. Well, I um, just remember that that you know the point three five was unrealistic. There, it was a point one for industrial and commercial, and on top of a point two five. Right, so you and, weren't trying to allocate to your pizza huts or some of these yeah, smaller things that and, you're seeing and, right now where the staff works, uh, you know, spends quite a bit of uh, staff time doing that. So if you just had that coverage, yes, we did have a tenth of an acre foot markup. So what you're saying is 0.17 seems to be, you know, even if we do get a little more efficient, it seems to be a, a sweet spot that we can live with. It is... The actual, based on billing, which is yeah. important to know, but there's also all engineers put margins of safety on things. So you don't want to run your community right at that number for planning purposes. So I think I'm trying to prepare you that, you know, the city needs to do a little work to, um, you want to know your actuals, that's actual, that's important, but you also have to have margins of safety or some kind of built-in cushion for writing out changes that you might not see, you know, you might not know are coming your way. So um, when did when did the worm start to look at uh, residential usage? As soon as we started building it, we built okay, it. Okay, but I know I, what I mean is, like the year two thousand or. Um, when does the data start rolling? Yeah, when did the the, the data start? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's twelve years. Okay. okay. So we'll be back uh, at the council level uh, when we have time for the consultant to continue working. There's no sense in providing numbers that we have to retract, even if it's off by a hundredth. <laughs> so, you know, if it's a 0.17 versus a 0.16, you know, we're in the hundredths place at this point, uh, decimal-wise. So <laughs> but we'll, we want to make sure that we can uh, stand by that number if this is to actually be then cause an adjustment within your policy to move to a different number. Okay. Leslie, I appreciate the update, and I appreciate the, the notion of having a little bit of buffer in place, too. I think it's, to your point, it's, it's good to have actuals, but it's also good to, to have a little room for error. So I appreciate that. Anything else from staff? All right. I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Thanks, everybody.